Guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Today I'm going to be doing our quarantine trace. As youngsters, this was the first fish that I remember catching when I went with my father. Okay, one of the easiest fish to catch, one of the most prolific fish around, lovely bait fish. For us as youngsters in the old days, this was the bait that my father used to love. We used to catch a lot of cob with it. To make it, what we need is 11 kilo Kingfisher nylon, our trusty mustard scissors, number 10 barrel swivel, and of course our number 9 hook, that's a 92247. The reason we use this hook, it's got barbs on the back. So when you put your sardine bait on, it actually holds it on perfectly. Okay, so let's go through what it actually looks like. First of all, I've actually opened one up, make life easier for us. In, in the commercially tied packet, you will get two of these traces. Basically, there is the swivel, that's a size 10 barrel swivel. 30 centimeters to 40 centimeters of hook snoot with our number nine, um, 92247 on it. And you'll see there's two of them. And of course, at the end of it, you will attach your sinker. So that's what we're going to be making. Very simple, that's it there. Quick and easy. So let me show you how to tie it. I'm going to grab some nylon here. Get our swivel out. Okay, so we take our number 10 barrel swivel and go through the eye and we're tying a figure of eight. There's a link in the description on how to tie a figure of eight. So I'm just going to do this very quickly. So here we go. We've got the size 10 barrel swivel, our nylon we've put through it and we're just going to wrap it around three times. One, two, three times around, back through, open up. There's our figure of eight. Pull it reasonably tight, slide it down. Cut off the tag end. <clears throat> okay. Now to do the knot, there, there's two knots that we can use to make it quite easy for us. The first is going to be a simple figure of eight. So I'm just going to show you two different knots on the same trace. Okay, so take it. We give ourselves about 10 to 15 centimeters of nylon. And all we do is go around back through once, back through twice. And again, all that is is a figure of eight. There we go. There's your figure of eight forming. Pull tight. Cut off the tag end. Okay, so there's the first one done. 30 centimeters away, again. We're gonna do it exactly the same. So there we go, once, through, twice, through. Lubricate and of course just cut off the tag end over there. It does not matter which side of the tag end you cut for this trace. And then cut the sinker snoot about 30 centimeters away. Okay so that's the sinker end, that's the swivel end to attach it. Like I said there's a link at the bottom on the icon there you can have a look see how to tie the figure of eight. There we go again. All I'm doing is tying the figure of eight. The reason we use 11 kilo Kingfisher nylon for these commercially tied traces, it's for the entry level angler and they are a lot harder, they wear a lot better than tying a lighter trace. There we go, through, pull tight. You do when fishing for quarantine and that, catch other fish species that are a lot bigger and a lot stronger. For instance, blacktail, you can catch blacktail on this trace. Um, I've caught bronze bream before as well on it. So, thicker nylon is advised for the quarantine trace, just simply because you can hook and land bigger fish. 
than what you're actually targeting. So there we go, guys. That's the simple quarantine trace. And your sinker will go on the end there. There we go. Quickly, tied, easy to use. Okay, so those are the commercially tied ones. Okay, this is part two of it. This is a quarantine trace. Just a different variation in the knot form. Okay, again, we're gonna do the figure of eight to the swivel. Figure of eight is very easy. One, two, three times around. Back through. There's your figure of eight. Little lubrication, pull tight. Cut off the tag end. Okay, so the knot I'm gonna show you now is what they call a dropper loop. We take your line, like so. You go across it, like that. Okay, so all I'm doing is just crisscrossing. I'm then gonna take this part of it and wrap it around four times. One, two, three, four times. Take the loop part and shove it through the loop that I've created. So you can see over there what it looks like. I'm just gonna hold on here. Pull tight, there it is. Bit of lubrication. Pull tight. So that's the dropper loop. Cut off the top part of the dropper loop. And you'll find that that arm comes out at 90 degrees. Again, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the second part of it. That's where I want the knot to be. So I'm gonna crisscross it. Get my length of the line that I want. So I'm just crossing the line, wrapping around four times. One, two, three, four times. Take the loop, stick it back through, like that. And again, there's the dropper loop. Pull tight. Cut off the top one. Give yourself a bit of sinker snooting over there. The nice part about that knot is everything comes out at 90 degrees compared to the figure of eight that I did on the previous one. There we go. To attach the hooks, all we're gonna use again is the figure of eight. We're making the little tag end about 30 centimeters in length, 25 centimeters, here we go. One, two, three times. Slide down. Pull tight. Cut. Second one, we do exactly the same for the second one. Pull tight. Okay, so there we go. You're going to tie your main line onto the swivel on the top. There is our dropper loop basically done with either a one ounce or a two ounce sinker on the end over there. Okay, so you're fishing very light for them and that's the trace. It's quick and easy as that. Dropper loop done, good to go. Go and catch your quarantine and enjoy it, guys. Okay, guys, here we go. This is my version. Um, it's a lot lighter. You get a lot more bites, but you do get cut off. So it's fishing very light and I've done it for years. It's one of the better um, traces, but it is very light. Okay, so what we require for it, our trusty mustard scissors, um, size 10 barrel swivel, I've got one of them, 92247 size nine, uh, it's a mustard hook, and Maxima 5.5 kilo. It's very light, it works extremely well. Okay, what we need, again, is just some nylon. We're gonna attach the swivel first of all like we did before in our previous one, so let's just do that. Okay, we now go about 30 centimeters away. Put your finger there, and we take this part of it, the bottom part of the line, and we're just gonna fold it over, so we're doing a dropper loop. So, there we go straight across. And what I'm gonna do is this line here, I'm just gonna wrap it around the line that goes to my sinker. So all you do is you just wrap it around. There we go. Go around one, two, three, four times. Take the loop that you've created and stick the other one through. Like that. 
put the two together, there we go, it's forming the, the actual dropper loop that I want, and then you just lubricate it. Keep tension on it, and there we go. Okay, makes a nice, neat little knot, and we cut off the area there for the hook. So that's the first one, done. Okay. Now to do the second one, we're going to do exactly the same thing. The same distance apart, which is about 30 centimeters. We're going to create the second dropper loop. So we create swivel, dropper loop, about 30 centimeters to 40 centimeters away. 30 centimeters here. I'm going to create the second dropper loop. Okay, so what we're going to do, loosen this again. Okay, to create the second dropper loop, what we do is we fold it over, pull the line back over there, and wrap it around four times. One, two, three, four times. Back through. Start pulling it until it starts to feel the tension in the actual line. You can feel it starts to get a bit tight. Bit of lubrication. Pull tight, cut it off, and then measure the length that you've made this part of it. So that there is where my hook's going to be, and I'm just going to cut a little bit longer. But that much longer is where my sinker is going to go into. Okay, so let's attach the first nine double two four seven, size nine. So we take that. There we go, he has the trace all done. You'll see that the top hook is slightly shorter than the bottom hook, which is this one here, going to your sinker over there. The reason being is you don't need so much movement when it's higher up. If you're just standing with your rod up, your tip up, this one doesn't need to be too, too long, if I can put it that way. It doesn't need to move around, it will move by itself. Okay, so that's it there. There's my trace done. Now I'm just going to show you a little trick for fishing, uh, for quarantine. And that is, because it's a very light trace, they tangle up very easy. You can't put them into packets and stuff like that. So you use a pool noodle and a paper clip. So what do you do with the paper clip? You just cut off one side there, cut off the other side of the paper clip. So we've pretty much got two little U-shaped clips. What we do is the swivel side, put the paper clip through it, like so. You take your pool noodle, insert it into the pool noodle like that, and you just wrap it around. One, two, three, four, whoop, let's do it again. One, two, three, and then when you get to the fourth one, you'll find that that hook, you can just hook into the pool noodle, and you just carry on going. You get to the second hook, over there, hook it into the pool noodle. Then what you do is you take the, the sinker part of it, wrap it around, and take your paper clip once again, insert it, where the nylon is. Now that keeps it all neat, tidy, easy to go. When you're ready to use it, all you do is you pull off that one, undo the whole hook and trace system. There we go. And you can tie it up and start fishing. It's quick and easy. Use a pool noodle, guys. It works extremely well for this kind of trace, this kind of fishing. Go out there and enjoy catching quarantine. We get them all the way from the Cape, all the way up to KZN. One of our most prolific bait fish that we get for cob fishing. So yeah, go out there, have some fun, take your kids fishing. Easy to make the traces. There we go guys, it's easy as that. Okay guys, 
Basically, the baiting up for carotene is so simple. Take a knife, and all we're going to do is work away from ourselves. Be very careful, knives are sharp. This is a frozen sardine, so it might be a bit more difficult for me to cut it. And it's literally, like I said, work away from yourself, not like I'm doing it at the moment. It works best if your sardine is actually defrosted. So all we do is we cut the back, very thin slither of the middle section. And the reason being is, if you have a look here, you'll see it's a lot darker in color. That's it's like the blood or whatever it might be. It's the darker part of the actual sardine. It's very firm, that black part of it, that brown part that you see there and over there. And baiting up is as simple as putting it down, and just cutting a whole lot of little strips out of it, like that. It's all you need to do. On your bait box, that's it. Take your hook, take a piece of bait that you've cut, and from the skin side, at the back, go through it, That's it. Can't be any simpler than that. No cotton required. Done. We have another one. Show you again. Take a bit of the, the bait. Go through the skin side. Go back through it. Can't be simpler than that, guys. There we go. Quarantine bait ready to fish. No cotton required whatsoever. The skin actually holds the bait on. The barbs hold the bait on to the actual hook. And that's it. It's simple as that. Go out there and enjoy, guys.